Um, so we had Ebola and COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy, how political climates and the media impact pandemics. Um, so I'm Kristen Burrows. I'm Denise Brina Bustos. And I'm Hannah Weigel. And here is our presentation. Ebola is a severe, sometimes fatal disease found in humans and primates, which is originally transmitted through wild animals, then spread throughout populations through direct contact, contact with contaminated blood secretions, organs, or other bodily fluids of infected people, and with surfaces and materials. There have been many outbreaks in Central Africa near tropical rainforests, and those, those were the first recorded. The 2014 through 2016 outbreak in West Africa was the largest and most complex Ebola outbreak since the virus was first discovered in 1976. It is thought that fruit bats of the Pteropodidae family are natural Ebola virus hosts. During Congo's recent outbreak of Ebola, the first ever multi-drug randomized control trial was conducted to evaluate the effectiveness and safety of drugs used in the treatment of Ebola patients. Two monoclonal antibodies in maize and Ibanga were approved for the treatment of Zaire Ebola virus infection in adults and children by the US FDA back in 2020. COVID-19 is an, infection, is an infect, infectious disease caused by a newly discovered strand of coronavirus. This disease is spread primarily through droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose when an infected person coughs or sneezes. It is known to cause in, um, in mild to moderate, moderate respiratory illness and most recover without requiring special treatment. However, older people and those with underlying medical problems like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, and cancer are likely to experience more severe illness. As of February 2021, at least seven different vaccines across several platforms have rolled out in different countries. Along with that, more than 200 other vaccine candidates are in, dev in development and 60 plus, more than 60 are now in clinical development. Scientists are working tirelessly and fiercely on COVID-19 vaccines, but their rollouts are not to be used as a substitute for other safety practices, such as mask wearing, washing hands, and other things. Um, so for the political climate during pandemics, um, political climate can be influenced by a variety of factors. Um, some of those factors can influence a bit of the political climate and in return impact people's response to the pandemic and the public health measures, such as wearing masks or getting the vaccine. Um, and those are elections, immigration, economy, healthcare, and race relations. Um, so media during pandemics. Um, the media environment can also be very influ influential in determining how people feel about a pandemic and vaccines. Different types of media that can have an impact on pandemics include biased and unbiased news outlets, selective journalism, public interests, and local and national news. And so for the political climate during Ebola, some of the largest factors um, was in the US, it was under President Barack Obama's administration. And so he was having to handle all of these new cases and cases coming into the US as well. Um, and then there was also the upcoming presidential election, which affected the politics and media coverage of Ebola. Um, and then this also affected like travel mandates um, and people like coming in and out of Africa in the different areas that were infected with Ebola. Um, and then also uh, racism was a major like factor and um, a lot of stuff was being talked about with racism since a lot of the people infected with Ebola happened to be black. Um, and then next.
And then for the media coverage during Ebola, um, one of the major things in August 2014, the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency of international concern. And so that also sparked concern and worries for other people throughout the world um, about Ebola. And then some other things going on um, were climate change concerns. And so that was something else that kind of like could overshadow some of the Ebola coverage. Um, and then also there was media coverage on discrimination with the more African-Americans and um, just actual Africans being infected with Ebola. So the political climate during COVID-19 has been impacted, well, has been formed by the more direct visibility of the Black Lives Matter movement, along with the general elections that were that occurred during 2020. And of course, the um, conflict between Dom, Do, Donald Trump, President, former President Donald Trump and Dr. Fauci, who was in charge, who is in charge of COVID-19 protocols and such. Um, but while he was butting heads with President Trump, that's a lot of how political climate kind of got more all over the place along with the other things going on. Media coverage during COVID-19 has fluctuated um, throughout different things, not just with COVID-19, but more recently, you've seen more news coverage about anti-Asian um, anti American and Pacific Islanders, along with more um, recently also the coup that occurred at the Capitol and other protests um, that have occurred along with the Black Lives Matter movement and as well as other political events, both foreseen and unforeseen. Okay, um, so for some vaccine hesitancy, uh, so hesitancy in general um, refers to the delay in acceptance or refusal of accepting vaccine um, despite the availability of vaccine services. Um, and to further explain vaccine hesitancy, there are two theories, the social co cognition theory and the protection motivation theory. Um, so the social cognition theory was developed by Albert Bandura, um, and it states that vaccine hesitancy varies by several factors, um, disease, vaccine, time, place and cultural context, context. And in other words, many demographic and behavioral factors influence vaccine hesitancy. Um, and this theory argues that in matters of health behavior, there is reciprocal triadic causation among three um, basic components, behavior, person, and environment. And each of the three affects the other two. Um, if the outcome expectancy is positive, then the behavior or that the behavior that is required to attain it is more likely to be engaged in um, than if the outcome expectancy is negative. So in other words, if people perceive that vaccine or vaccination will have positive results, they tend to strive to attain it. Um, and then the protection motivation theory um, was developed by Ronald Rogers. Um, and it states that an individual's intent to adopt a response to a threatening situation is formed by the perceived magnitude of the threat, the probability of the threat's occurrence, and the um, efficac efficac efficacy sorry, of the coping response. <laughs> Um, and as those factors increase, the motivation to engage in protective behavior increases, and that in turn positively affects the intent to adapt or adopt recommended response responses such as vaccination. 
Um, so fear and doubt regarding the effectiveness and the ethical implications of these vaccines have shown to be more of a problem in several pandemics than the availability and access of the vaccines to the public in general. Um, and in 2019, the World Health Organization actually identified vaccine hesitancy as a top global health threat. And so some ways to combat this vaccine hesitancy um, also goes along with the media and their coverage. Um, and so the public distrust calls for massive communication campaigns to keep people informed and then hopefully lead to more confidence in vaccines. Um, there are discussions like in various different pandemics as well um, of like house to house campaigns in communities by healthcare workers, including doctors, but you also have to account for a safety risk for those healthcare workers. And then um, a major theory, the agenda setting theory describes the media's influence on the importance of topics on the public agenda, such as vaccination during a pandemic. Um, and so accessibility, priming, and framing of information are very important for circulating all this critical info that's necessary to keep the public informed and help build public trust in vaccines. And so vaccine reporting should be primed and framed considering um, like the following things in the news coverages. They want to define clearly scientific terms. Um, explain rollout stages of the vaccine, specify all the available vaccines, and then how many people have been vaccinated, um, have clear reportings of side effects, and also a good use of appropriate illustrations um, would be helpful. And then some statistics, um, 1.57 billion households around the world own a television set, 75% have access to radio, 2.5 billion read newspaper and print regularly, and 4.13 billion people have access to the internet. So as long as the media is able to filter out worthy news and people do their own research as well, but um, try to have more trustworthy information out there, then there are plenty of people with access to this crucial information to help make their informed decisions on the vaccine. And then also the media directs the centrality of information by providing this constant and repetitive reporting that helps mold the public opinion. Um, and this also has a great impact on a person's cognition, emotion, and behavior. And that can influence their decision-making process when considering getting the vaccine. And this is important not only for people's individual safety, but also for getting closer to herd immunity in the general population. Um, so vaccine hesitancy for Ebola. Um, in June of 2020, the social sciences um, analysis cell followed up with um, different households and healthcare worker surveys um, at the start of the 11th Ebola outbreak in the um, Ecuador province or province um, and they found that misunderstanding and misinformation can or on the vaccine can lead to distrust and hesitancy. Um, they found that knowledge does not necessarily equal trust. Um, and they found that up to 92% of community respondents reported having heard of the Ebola vaccine. Um, however, nearly half refused the vaccine due to a lack of trust of the vaccine, belief that Ebola was not a risk, um, fear that the vaccine would infect them, and a lack of trust in healthcare workers. Um, also that mistrust of Ebola response actors and authorities had a negative effect on the consent and commitment of the community, um, leading to a refusal of the vaccine. Um, also lack of consent forms in appropriate or local languages and lack of engagement of local influencers um, such as women, youth, and leaders had a detrimental impact on vaccine awareness. Um, limited trust of healthcare workers was due to their lack of training and vaccine awareness. Um, and Healthcare workers refuse the vaccine due to the lack of information and fear of side effects. 
49% um, of healthcare workers had not been vaccinated for Ebola because they feared side effects or lacked information on where to get side or vaccinated. And lastly, the distrust and fear of the Ebola vaccine was also found to impact routine um, vaccinations. Uh, and so for vaccine hesitancy, specifically for COVID-19, uh, many people are hesitant because of a fear of side effects, safety, and effectiveness of the vaccine. And this includes a lot of women that are worried about childbearing after getting the vaccine. And it's usually because they've not been correctly informed about how the vaccine actually works. Um, and in a study that was done in France of people 18 and older, it collected data on the percentage of people um, in various age and income ranges that showed reluctance toward the vaccines. And it uh, showed that some of the highest numbers were populations that were at the highest risk as well. Like 37% of low-income people who are typically more exposed to infectious diseases already due to their living and working conditions show refusal or hesitancy towards vaccines. And then for young women aged 18 to 35 years old, um, and their demographic also has the most influence on childhood vaccination, their percentage was 36%. And then people 75 years or older who are also at a high risk of catching a severe form of COVID-19, uh, their statistic was at 22%. And then another study that I looked at uh, analyzed results from 126 different surveys from like online questionnaires and phone interviews, mostly in the US, but also international. And it looked at some of the reasons why these people showed vaccine hesitancy. And so first off, um, doubts toward the expedited development and approval process are one of the largest um, public concerns. So lots of people are worried that the vaccines were created too quickly or there wasn't enough uh, testing and trials. Um, many also have a lack of trust in the vaccine because it's only been approved by the US Food and Drug Administration or FDA for the emergency use authorization, not as an officially mandated vaccine yet. And um, one study also showed a whole 75% of people that were concerned about the safety of fast tracking the vaccine. Um, and then for another uh, reason why people are hesitant, both studies that I mentioned earlier showed a connection between political beliefs and attitudes towards the vaccine. Like in France, um, those who voted for a far left or far right candidate, as well as those who abstained from voting, were more likely to refuse the vaccine than those who voted for more intermediate politicians. And then in the US, there have also been huge discrepancies in the vaccine acceptance between Democrats and Republicans with 80% and 48% acceptance uh, respectively. And this also translated to COVID-19 risk perceptions where 42% of Democrats versus 19% of Republicans believed COVID-19 to be a serious health threat. Um, and so with high tensions regarding political candidates in the 2020 president, presidential election, the pandemic and the number of infected infections uh, were greatly affected by people's political beliefs and also their commitment to following public health measures or getting the vaccine. Um, and then another reason why some showed vaccine hesitancy is perceived political interference in the vaccine process. So some survey subjects um, with higher skepticism had lower trust in government or professionals, and some showed conspiracy thinking too, and thus had higher doubts and objections to the vaccine. Um, and to go along with that, some countries such as China and South Korea that had higher vaccine acceptance percentages reported higher trust in central government. So it went along with more trust in the government, there was more vaccine acceptance. Um, and then also 82% um, of Democrats and 70% of Republicans in the US worried that vaccine approval was driven more by politics than science. And then lastly, another thing, um, demographics also played a major role in vaccine hesitancy. A survey showed that increased vaccine acceptance followed along with higher levels of education. Um, so one study showed that Vaccine acceptance was recorded at 42% for 
for those without college degrees, then it went up to 62% with college degrees and up even more to 73% for those uh, postgraduates. And then lower income individuals, such as people without health insurance, living in rural areas or larger households, were less likely to get vaccinated. And then it also went along with race. 81% um, of Asian Americans, 68% of whites and Hispanics, and then 40% of Blacks accepted the vaccines. Um, but one study found that African Americans were 40% more likely than whites to reject vaccination due to their lack of trust in the vaccine safety, efficacy, and resources. Ultimately, we conclude that political climate and media impact each other immensely. Um, it, political climate impacts what the media is covering and thus what the information that people are receiving and getting from whatever media sources they use are going to impact their opinion and it'll just go back to how um, politics happen in the United States and in anywhere in the world. Um, both expected and unexpected events affect what, what will be cover, covered at the end. And essentially both political climate and media coverage play a huge role in whether or not there is vaccine hesitancy or if there is vaccine acceptance. Thank you. Um, and this is just our literature-sided page. <laughs>